In today's video, I'm going to give you a quick overview on this Kenwood. This is a uh, marine package, which consists of a single 10-inch free air subwoofer, which I'm going to go into some amount of great detail, because this is probably the most important part of this combo kit, as far as I'm concerned, as well as the amplifier that comes with it. And I'll give you a little tidbits of information on the wiring. Some of the changes that I've noticed, as with the prior models, some of the hardware you could expect, some of the sizes, specs, etc., all the stuff that you would normally expect from me to, to, to tackle. I will do that, as I always do. So, uh, again, it's a P-WD-250MRW. So, essentially, Kenwood says that this air is a 200-watt maximum, note the word maximum, um, peak output power system, which is comprised of this small amplifier, which is very nice, very small. I mean, look at the size, I mean, comparing to my hands. You know, average looking guy, average size hands. Um, this is a KAC-210MR. This is, again, 200 watts peak output, not RMS, not RMS. Um, which is consisting of your RCA line inputs, which is where you're going to feed your RCA low-level audio input from your head unit, right there. Over here, we have a 10-pin plug, which left me a little bit of dismay because I know in prior years it was not the same as it is now. The plug is identical, nothing has changed there, but what has changed is right here on the harness, you'll see that there's a two yellows, two blacks, which is of course for your power, constant yellow, black, ground, and your blue white, which is the remote turn on lead. You got two fuses in the yellows, which are rated at seven and a half each, so that's a total of 15 watts, and as we all know, you know, uh, 12 volts times 15 amps, that's going to be your your output, maximum output anyway, I mean before the wires just burn and annihilate themselves. Um, but getting back to the 10 pin plug, I wanted to say uh, something about this because I thought it was noteworthy. In the instructions, in the instructions themselves, that it says that this unit will take high and low level audio inputs. Now of course here, as you can see, it's taking low level audio inputs because the RCs are there. Now in this plug, they used to have an extra set of four wires for feeding a high level input. So if you didn't have a stereo that had an RCA output, you could just connect left plus negative, right plus negative, along with your power ground and remote turn on lead, and be done with it. That is oddly removed from this package for whatever reason. I don't know what's up with that. I don't know if that's something they started in 2013. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't been paying that close of attention to these units for the last couple of years because they have been around quite some time. They've been around like a donut. You know, these things are nothing new. Um, however, to me, it was something noteworthy if you only have a basic or a cheap, you know, radio that came with your boat and you're not, you know, too crazy. Um, you're going to have to get yourself a line level converter to convert your, your radio's speaker level outputs to the RCA inputs. That's what I'm trying to say. Enough of that. Over here... 4-pin plug, these here are the outputs, very short, not much uh, extra wire, as you can see, hardly anything at all, so in order for you to go from the actual amp into the woofer, which you have dual voice coils, you got one over here and you got another one over there, uh, good luck with that, unless you're mounting this to the back of the, 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 the speaker itself, you're going to need to extend these. Now, they did color coordinate these just like a regular car or a marine stereo. What you would expect, you would have um, your purples, which are always, you know, by definition, standard in the, of the industry is right. Green would be the left for the rear. But who cares? The stripe is always negative. Solid is uh, your positive. And on the woofer, you have two sets of terminals, gold plated. Um, yeah, gold plated, not brass. And. Uh, you would put one here, one here. Each one of these um, terminals is one and a half ohms, by the way. So when you put these two together, it's going to internally bridge at the amplifier and give you a three ohm load at the amplifier, by the way. Okay? So that's the way that's going to go. Now, I would not recommend wiring this thing any differently than the factory does because if you lower the impedance, this amplifier, it's, I just, just don't think it can hack it. Don't mess with it. Leave it be. If you want more power, get yourself a bigger amplifier. Because in my opinion, this woofer here, which is the KFC W250MRW, is a 10-inch woofer. This one here, I personally think, will take much more power than this amplifier here can provide to it. The excursion on this thing is very nice. It's a nice stiff cone. 
It's um, very durably made. I mean, I've actually dropped these things on accident. I've never actually even cracked the basket, which is very cool. Um, I don't know if we can see this very well, but these are all covered. All the uh, tinsel leads going to the voice coil. They're not running through the spider, so they're very nice. A little extra slack. I like what I see here. I like the stainless hardware. I like all this on the bottom. I like the way the, uh, the magnet structure and everything is all sealed up very well. I like in here. It seems to be rather well. Maybe a little bit of venting, which of course every woofer needs. On the top, very aesthetically nice to see. I think it's very pretty. Um, the overall cutout width on this sucker is not in an eighth inch. So that will be the whole size for this. Typical depth, you know. I didn't measure it, but perhaps I will or I'll add it to the uh, description. Or maybe I'll just add you all the uh, specs just for the hell of it. But I like. It's a nice little beefy little woofer. It's got some good weight to it. I mean, it's not cheap at all in any way. So basically, this, this, this. That woofer. Stainless hardware with uh, speed clips, which is always very nice. Real stainless. It's nice to see that they're still doing that. The two plug, two plugs. I'm sorry. Now, of course, when you are gonna install this and you're gonna start from zero or scratch, make sure you run out and get yourself at least a ten, a ten gauge amp installation kit because you're gonna need it. I'd also recommend getting, I guess, if you're gonna leave this as it is, 18 gauge speaker wire just to extend these out. If you're gonna do one better, if you're ever gonna plan on upgrading in the future, you know, spring for some maybe. 14 or 12 gauge if you really want to get crazy. Um, your two manuals warranty card, cutout template for the woofer, very straightforward. Um, just one thing, when you do mount these woofers, make sure that they're in a free air application because they are going to perform their absolute best when, when in a free air application. If you don't know what that means, it means this. This here would be the gel coat or whatever of the boat and of course you're going to have all open air in the front and you're going to have open air in the back. That's a free air application. Also, do not mix and match and have ported, vented, and free air woofers in the same boat because they will work against each other. You'll have all kinds of weird shit going on. It will not sound very nice. So if you're going to do this, you could add as many of these things as you want, which most people do. I've seen people go crazy and put up to four of these things um, in the back of their boats just because they're crazy. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Go crazy as you want to go. So there you go, people. That's the PWD 250 MRW review by me.